Do not buy a car from a dealer that does this. I sold cars for 40 years, and here's five red flags you should never put up with. All right, Pops, what's number one on the five red flags you have to watch out for when buying a car? The dealership insists that you give them a credit application before they'll even let you go for a test drive. Crazy. Let's run through number two through five, and then we'll double back and we'll spend time on each one. What's number two on the list, Pops? The dealer insists that you give them a good faith deposit before they'll even begin to negotiate with you. Before we go to number three, CarEdge.com, we have all sorts of resources to help you avoid red flags like these. Number three. Once they appraise your car, they refuse to give you your car keys back. (laughs) Number four. (laughs) They won't disclose the interest rate on your loan until, well, you go to F&I. And what's number five? They insist that you pay for dealer installed accessories that they haven't even installed yet. Okay, back to number one. Let's dig into this. What about the credit application? Help me understand here. What is this first red flag? If a dealership insists that that you give them a credit application before you even go for a test drive, dealerships like to do that because they want to know exactly who they're dealing with, what type of credit history they have, and and what type of uh, markup they'll be able to make on interest rates for that customer. But they don't need to know your credit history before you drive a car. You might not even like the car that you drive. You might not even be interested in the car after you drive. So taking a credit application before a test drive is really a dealership just trying to qualify if you're even like financially capable of purchasing the vehicle. So like, I'm just trying to justify why they would do it. But like you said, there's no real reason because what if you're going to pay cash for it? What if you have bad credit? It's just, it's like an unnecessary step into you. It's a red flag because you shouldn't even ask. It's just, it's unprofessional. A, a lot of, a lot of comments will be from dealers who will say, yeah, but this, this, this will uh, make sure that we're not just joyriding with somebody who can't afford to buy the car. Okay. If you got somebody looking at a Ferrari, yeah, I guess maybe you'd want to qualify. You got somebody looking at a used Chevy Bolt? Uh, Guess what? Let's go for a test drive, see if they even like it first. One little aside here, when should you feel comfortable filling out a credit application at a dealership? Because I know you're saying it, you know, before a test drive is a red flag, but I've heard from plenty of our community members and my own personal experience, dealers will be, the salesperson especially, oh, fill out a credit app on the website, fill out a credit app on the website. When is the right time to fill out the credit app? And then we'll go back to number two. I just, a brief aside, because it feels worthwhile. The right time is after you've agreed on a price and you've decided that that's the car that you want. You don't need credit inquiries on your bureau reports because the dealership wants to know something. There's no need to do a credit application if you haven't agreed to buy the car. And you said price. What type of price? What was that? You said the price. What type of price? The out the door price, damn it. And don't ever forget that. Number I two, just what did. Is our second, <laughs> what is our second red flag, Pops? The dealership insists upon some type of good faith deposit before they'll even negotiate on that car with you. All right. What the heck is a good faith deposit? What are you talking about? Well, the salesperson is going to tell you, my boss wants to know that for sure you're a legitimate customer, a, 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 a contender, not a pretender when it comes to buying this car. They want to know that you have a real interest in it and that if they work out the numbers to your satisfaction, you'll take it. So I just need, I don't know, a small good faith deposit, maybe a thousand dollars in cash, credit card. Hell, even your watch would work. And this is legit. This happens. Oh, absolutely. It happens at some dealerships. It doesn't happen at legitimate dealerships. It doesn't happen at dealerships that you wouldn't want to run away from. Um, but there are dealerships out there where they will insist that their salespeople get a good faith deposit to show that the customer is truly interested in buying the car. What's your 100-yard dash time, Dad? Um, It's pretty slow, but it's still fast enough to get out the damn door. Number three, what was your third red flag? Once they've appraised your car, they refuse to give you your car keys back. All right, so I've heard this anecdote, but that that doesn't actually happen, right? Uh, well, it does, uh, and uh-huh. it happens. It happens a lot. Uh, when I first started in the industry, the the joke always was, "Well, they threw your keys on the roof of the facility." Okay. Um, I don't know that anybody ever did that because then you'd have to send your lot tech up there to go find the keys once you've traded the car. But 
oftentimes dealerships will hold your keys hostage when you might want to leave because they don't want you to leave. They want to figure out how to get to a car deal. And by holding on to the keys to your car, uh, they figure they can keep you there. Here's another mistake you don't want to make. Make sure your house key's not on that key ring with your car key. Have a spare key. Give them the spare key when they're appraising your car, not your normal key. Wow. 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 All right. What was number four on your list? Uh, well, they just absolutely refuse to tell you what your interest rate's going to be until you get to the finance office. So let's spend a little bit of time on this one, Dad, because we've talked in many of our videos. We have role play videos on this. We have other just dedicated videos on this. Getting a pre-approval before you go to the dealership to purchase a vehicle when you're financing it is so critically important because when you get your financing through a dealership, it's called indirect lending. Yes. The dealership is not the one that's giving you the underwriting, the financing, the loan. They are they are placing the loan at a bank and they're allowed to mark up that loan. They're allowed to mark up the interest rate on that loan. And so you really need to get a pre-approval before you go to the to the dealership, and you need to have a sense for what you can get approved for. Obviously, a pre-approval uh, you know, demonstrates that for you. So a dealership that's unwilling to talk to you about what you're approved for, you're saying that's a red flag. Oh, absolutely. Once, once they have run your credit report and they start giving you payments, well, those payments have to be based on an interest rate. And there's no reason for your for the salesperson not to reveal what that interest rate is that they're using um, so that you have a better understanding of what you're looking at. When they insist that, well, I don't know, the finance guy, I'll go over it with you. Well, that's another form of getting a commitment from you to at least sit down with the finance guy to find out how much stuff they're going to try and sell you, and, and at that point, what the interest rate's going to be. A legitimate store it will be more than happy to share the interest rate with you. Two questions for you. One is, earlier in the same video, you said you do not fill out a, or, um, a credit application until you get to the finance office, so help us understand some of your logic around this. And number two, does this show up on those out-the-door worksheets where it's got like payment ranges and like estimated interest rates? Are you saying that's where we should get confirmation and get something more firm? What I said was... Don't fill out a credit application just to go for a test drive. Once you've started to negotiate a deal with the dealership and you've gotten to an out-the-door number that's acceptable and they want to start giving you a payment range, at that time, if you want to give them the credit application so they can hone in on what the interest rates would be so you can get, instead of a payment range, a payment, yeah, then you would give them a credit application so you can get that information. Love it. This is such great information. Number five, what was that again on your list? You know you need to leave when the dealership insists that you pay for Dealer installed accessories, well, that haven't even been installed yet. Yeah, or all sorts of bogus add-ons. We'll flood the screen with examples of this because every single day back at CarEdge.com, we have a concierge car buying service, and so we see this crap constantly, all right? So when the dealer add-ons are all over your OTD worksheet, obviously try and negotiate them off, but if they're mandatory or they've already been installed on the car or whatever other one-liner they've got for that re uh, rebuttal, just walk. Just walk. And uh, we've had countless stories, both in my email inbox, our Google reviews, the community forum of people who have walked. And then what happens? You get the phone call the next day. You know, so absolutely do not dealer installed add ons, crap like that. Not all of it's crap, but a lot of it gets marked up like crazy. You don't have to accept it. I, I, For instance, dealerships often insist for people who are ordering a car that they have to include the dealer installed accessories. The car hasn't even arrived at the dealership yet. OK, they haven't even had the opportunity to install. Them. So if a dealership insists that you have to buy dealer installed accessories on a vehicle and they haven't even installed them yet, that's a huge red flag. If we can help you out with anything car buying related, my dad and I started Car Edge almost five years ago. Go check out some of our earliest YouTube videos. We are here to help back on the website and here on the channel. Dad, thanks as always for sharing your knowledge. Thank you.